I have always believed in UFOs and aliens to exist. Of course, there are some people out there in the world that doesn't believe them to exist. They're only saying that we had made up the source stories of seeing such things as UFOs. But there is one particular event that made me much stronger believer in UFOs and aliens. That event, I wasn't alone. My name is Ryan. This happened during the summer of 2016, and it was when my me and when my best friend Isaac had decided that we wanted to go camping, and we had invited our girlfriends to join us. We haven't done that in a while, but we had camped all together for a while before. But we chose to go to a forest near our town that we had been to but never camped before. I had invited my girlfriend Amanda and Isaac had invited his girlfriend Tina. We were actually quite all excited about this. After we had gathered all the things that the supplies and that we, some, that we needed, we chose to go to the small forest near our town. It took about maybe two hours of driving there. When we arrived, we found a spot that we chose near a river where we could do some fishing and swimming around. And after we came to the third spot, we set up all the things that we needed. Me and, me and Amanda were going to sleep in one tent, Tina and Isaac in their own tent. After both tents were set up, we had gathered the firewood and since it was still in the afternoon, we used to go to the river to do some swimming since it was a warm summer day. But Afterwards, we made some dinner of the things that we brought. Even though we were considered to do fishing, but small, even though this is not irrelevant, but we never did any fishing. Just saying. But there was a good spot for doing that. But after that, we went to our tents, get to some sleep around, say, 9 p.m. or so. But after we had fallen asleep, Suddenly, all of us woke up because we heard a strange sound of a humming. And I'm not saying like saying a singing humming. This was some sort of like a, a metallic humming sound. I can't really describe it, but it sounded like a metallic humming. If you heard something similar to that, you may understand what I meant or what I mean. And we were laying in our tents. We weren't like froze or anything, we just puzzled. But the humming sound didn't last long for maybe if only a couple of minutes or I believe maybe 10 minutes or so. After that, it just gone. But the next morning, we talked about this sound that we heard, just to confirm that we all heard it. And we decided to go see where the sound came from. Because Isaac managed to point out where this sound was coming from, by based on the sound for at least the direction, at least roughly. But we went to the spot. Nothing was even there. No signs of any people, no signs of any animals, nothing. Like, we first believed maybe there was another campsite or something. But there was no, no, no disturbance at all. Like, nothing. Not, not uh, any sign of campfire or anything. So. We went back to our campsite, and we were just hustled, but it was just strange. But the second night, it happened again. Isaac suggested that we just go to see what's causing the sound, because that was a little bit disturbing that our, it was affecting our sleep. So, even though I was like at first hesitating to this, but eventually agreed to go with them. The girls thought that they wanted to stay behind, but they chose to go with us. And we walked around, and at first we found nothing. Suddenly we heard all a sound, and it was the same humming sound, but it was a bit louder, or at least stronger in tone. And we followed for a while, and suddenly we saw this light ahead of us. We thought like, 
is there a, someone here? We didn't speak or anything, we just looked at each other and had almost the same thought. But we've walked further and further, but then suddenly stopped. We saw this. And now, at the time, I had no idea what to say, but, but we saw this strange looking object. I think it, at first we had no idea what it was. There was not even a, there was not a rock because it was a metallic shape. It was shape as an egg. First, we're like, who would make a, something like that and put it in the middle of the woods? But there was this white light in the middle of it, like it's just a one strain of lights. But it was one of the things that we noticed. This craft, or at least we now know it was a craft. It was hovering in midair, but two feet above the ground and it made the same sound as still as it's humming but suddenly it stopped and as we just staring at it the lights was still there not changing at all but suddenly this craft took off right up in the air and at such speed we was hard to even follow it we just stood there looked up in the sky trying to figure out what they were, or where it even went. But it was just nothing. We just stood there silent. Then we went back to our campsite. Isaac lit up the fire and we sit down and we were just too, we were so clear away to even go back to sleep. We even talked about it. It was like, Isaac like, Isaac was like, what was that even thing? I was like, I think that was a UFO. The others agreed, but they didn't know what to believe or anything otherwise. Because a man was like, aren't the UFOs supposed to be like a saucer-like shape? I told them, not really. The UFOs can be at any size. I heard that there are some egg shape like even cigar shape and who knows what other kinds of things are but this particular craft wasn't even that big it was probably just i would say maybe eight feet tall and maybe at the bottom as i said since it was shaped as an egg i would say maybe three or four feet wide it was a strange looking object and it shot up and right in the middle air as a bullet from a, a rifle or something. We all agreed this was something that we had never seen before. But we choose not to tell anyone because who would even believe us? And after the weekend was over, we returned home still puzzled of we all saw that day. But after a couple of days, I actually choose to tell my older brother Mark who was also a strong believer in such things and he had done some research by reading stories about the people's experience of UFOs and even abduction. He told me that people have seen the same shape of the craft for years around the region that we live and I was like so we were not the only one has seen this. Well to be honest it's not a confirming if this, what other people have seen, if they have been the same, exact same UFO that me and my friends have seen. But at least other people in the region and perhaps around the world have seen another egg shaped UFO. I told some of my friends about this and they believed me because they knew that Mark wasn't it the type of guy that would have just made up the stories? And today, we had still talked about this particular event. And we had only told this only to our close friends and family, who all, all believed us. If I had been there alone and told a story to, to, to my friends and all that, I don't know if they really would have believed me or not. But I'm glad I wasn't alone that day. And... Even so, 
aliens do believe in fact exist. Otherwise, it would have been quite mysteriously that our planet is the only one in the entire such vast universe that has life on it. Why would our planet be the only one that had a life, but no wonders? So, people may wonder, why didn't we see any aliens? Well, it's possible that some of the, the reason why that the, the aliens immediately saw them, because it might have this had noticed us and choose not to leave the craft and believe that we could be dangerous and choose to just leave rather than being attacked or something. But I'm saying right now, if we would attack them, we would have been likely to be defenseless. I mean, considering that they had a spaceship, a spacecraft, and based on that it was hovering middle air, mid air, it's only saying they were way more advanced than ours. So, but this is my story of me or my friends saw that day. Thank you for listening. My name is Gilbert. I have a story that I want to be telling for a while now, but it has nothing to do with me directly, but it has something that happened to my best friend, Fred. One day, me and Fred had decided to do some hiking and camping for a weekend. Since this happened during the autumn of 2012, we had chosen to go for one last camping trip before winter, since, since it was getting a little bit colder for each single day now. We had done this in the past before, so this was not the first time. And we chose to go to the woods near our hometown in Oregon, but I'm not going to give you exact location because to keep mine and Fred's privacy life private. But anyways, we went to a spot in my car, and this was around perhaps around 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We found a spot, we made, set up our tents and all that. Later, around, I would say maybe 4 or 5 p.m., we made a campfire, made a dinner, and just talked about random stuff. And... I would say maybe around 9 p.m. or so, or 9.30, which used to go to bed, since we were getting tired, and... But then, it was around 11 p.m. when Gilbert asked me if I was still up, and I was, because both of us woken up are hearing this... We heard a sound of humming, and it didn't seem to be that far away. We both get out of our tents, we were dressed, and choose to see what this was causing this sound. Since there was no anyone, any homes for at least two miles from our campsite. And not as more detail, we had even ran we had even seen any other people that day in the woods. So we followed the sound. But until it just stopped. It just only for a moment, if we could hear this sound like a humming, it was like no one, not like if someone was out in the woods singing, because who would have been mid doing some singing or humming middle of the woods at almost at midnight, as middle of nowhere in a deep woods? And like I said, there were no houses for two miles from our campsite, and we hadn't even seen any other people there. So that ruled out that part. But as it's, the sound stopped, we choose to go two different ways just to see if we could find any of what causing this. And we choose to wait, return at the meeting spot after 15 minutes. And after 15 minutes, I came back, but friend wasn't even back yet. So I decided to wait for only a couple more minutes before, for him. But he didn't show up, so I went for a look for his his direction, and and the sound hasn't even returned. So I spent at least 
the rest of the night looking around for him. But there were no trace of him, as nothing. I even started yelling out for his name. But still, nothing. It was like nothing. And even until daylight started showing up, I still hadn't found any traces of him. I got scared. So I chose to go back to my car, go back in town to get some help. With the, with the additional search parties who spent the rest of the whole day and night looking for Fred, but no luck. He wasn't even found for the rest of the weekend. And I was even taken in for questioning by the, for, for the, by the police. Thought maybe I had done, things, done something to my best friend Fred and just cover up for that he was actually supposed to be lost. But then... Suddenly, Fred was found only two miles outside town. But here's a question mark that, that made me puzzled. He was found not only two miles outside our town, but it was five miles from the campsite. And he didn't even remember what happened, only that he heard a sound and then went all black for him. Even though at least his parents was happy that he had returned. Even his family had questioned him where he had been all this whole weekend. But there were no signs when they were looking at him. There were no signs of he had even been in the woods like sleeping on the ground. There were no dirt on his clothes and in fact not a detail. He was still wearing the same clothes that day when he vanished. Because even when he, even before he re returned, I was worried if I'm going to see my best friend ever again. But at least I was happy too that he was home. And years later, I actually had re still remained as old good friend, a best friend with Fred. And one day, after so many years, me and Fred talked about old memories. And at the time, we were both married and have our own families. When we talked about it at that particular camp trip, Fred suddenly started mentioning that he started to remember pieces of what happened to him that day. He told me. That light. I was like, what light? Then he remembers that, he never, that I never saw it. But he told me, he asked me if I remember the humming sound which I did, and then he told me he was taken by aliens. They had taken him to some sort of ship. He was laying on this metallic table. He couldn't move. There were no restraining on him, but I told him it's possible they use some sort of force field to keep him down, which makes sense. Otherwise, it would have been impossible otherwise. But I asked him what if he remembered what happened to him. He told them that they did some tests, like doing some shaking his blood, doing his vitals, something like that, and they released him. I told them that I believed him. And it also made Fred a stronger believer about aliens and abductions. In fact, I did ask him at one point after this if it was okay if I told anyone else about this and at first he was hesitating because he said by mentioning this to other people they probably would think that he was crazy but i told him people have been going through this for decades a lot of people had going through this type of experience for years and this still not most of many of them has even told this story just because they weren't being to remain anonymous or they've just afraid of being scared. But a lot of people actually had came forward with the stories. And so after a while, he agreed to let me telling the story about his when he was abducted. Even to this day now, he doesn't still remember much about it. He had only get some more pieces of what happened that they, like I said earlier, they were just taking his blood samples. They were taking, I believe they checked his DNA or something. They, they were just 
they were just doing more, I believe, maybe standard check medical checkup or something, and they released him. And if someone actually did ask me about this, like, if this has, if this aliens had returned to do some more checking on him, but they haven't, luckily. And they even had asked him directly himself if he remembers if there was any, if he had any nightmares or if they were evil, if they somehow seemed evil to him. But he shook his head, they seemed only curious. When he asked to describe these aliens, he told them that they looked like these gray aliens, like Roswell gray aliens. Short, slim, gray bodies, big black eyes, that type of aliens. And even when he was questioned more if he remembered like how the spaceship looked or anything, or if even has if he saw it before he blacked out or anything, or after he was released. But he said he doesn't remember. Even he tried many times, but he hasn't. And to this day, I still still believe that my best friend, Fred, was taken by the aliens. But even though I'm very much happy that he came back, but he was very... I should mention a small detail here. Even after he came back, he didn't leave his home for days, or at least a couple of weeks, but eventually he regrettedly open up and start living a normal life again. Which I can completely understand, but after he went through, he was probably scared that those aliens will return, and which they never did, but eventually he started being able to have a normal life to finish school, get married, have a family. It just that. And I'm happy that my friend came back to me. I have no idea what I would have done if my friend had even returned. I would have been puzzled and people would likely would still blame me for the cause of my friend vanished. Like, I probably would have been called a murderer or something, which I would not have been happy about. But still, Fred, I'm happy you're back. And those, even though this may not even be possible, to the aliens, please. Never come back to us. We know that you already exist. Just stay away from us. I have a story that I would love to share with all of you. My name is Laura. I'm currently 42 years old, but this happened to me back in 2006 when I was 25 years old, and it happened to my now, husband Daniel, also was about 24 at the time, we were now at the time engaged. But anyways, this one particular event happened to both of us in one late evening. And I should mention, even before this event, I did believe in such things like UFOs, aliens. But I never in my life believed that I would be able to see an actual UFO myself. I only had heard stories about people have been seeing UFOs for such long time. Even mo most of people probably been said that they've just made up stories or they lied about it. But I was at least puzzled and a bit scared when this happened. But it was years ago. But now, I'm happy to have a memory that I can be, be able to share with some friends and close people that I trust and know, and perhaps other people. And it's also sometimes a good subject to talk about, just to bring up to other people that you don't know. But anyways, me and Daniel, while at the time we were engaged, like I said, we decided to do a night drive. And the evening was such nice clear evening this was during the summer i believe it was around late june june or early july that year and we had just had a board day 
and and there was nothing much to watch on the TV, and this wasn't that late. It was about, say, 6 p.m. or so, and we choose just to do an, a night ride before we go to bed later on, though. But halfway through our night ride, we suddenly saw this light above us. Like, it was like a, a spotlight, but much, much brighter. And we first thought that there was a helicopter. But then, it was no sound. If it was a helicopter, it would have made a distinguished sound. But we didn't hear any sound. I even opened my window and looked out, at least up to the sky. But I couldn't even tell if it was even a helicopter or not. Because it was hard to tell due to the fact that strong white light. I even told Daniel to go faster just to see what this strange craft would do, and he agreed. He stepped on this gas panel just a little bit faster, maybe 5 miles faster, just a bit faster than the speed limit, and I have to mention it, there were no cars on this particular road that evening, which was a probably a good thing though, but, but the, the craft above us seems to follow us without any problem. And even now we both of us started to get a little bit scared. Daniel stepped on the gas pedal as fast as he could. But no matter how fast he could go on with the car, even though we don't have the car anymore, but still, the craft still followed us without any problem. And it did so for at least about another 15 or 20 minutes. I remember how scared I was when it when I saw the craft was shaped like a cigar, and then I knew it was a UFO. I heard about different shapes of UFOs from the typical saucer shape, egg shape, cigar, or even a triangle. I was very scared. I told Daniel, and he told me not to freak out, but I would that I will, we will make it. Even deep down in my heart, I wonder if he just sang that so that I wouldn't freak out. But I knew that he was terrified himself. And despite he was driving as fast as he could with the car, the, crap of the UFO above us didn't seem to have no problem to follow us in that speed. And it did so for 20 minutes. And then after 20 minutes, it passed us. It suddenly flew past us with such speed, like faster than any jet planes that I had ever seen. Daniel stopped the car at that moment. Both of us stared out the windshield to see if we could see the craft or at least a UFO, but all we could see was a white light that vanished in mere seconds. As the car was still stopped on the road, and no other cars are nearby, no houses. We just sat there, talked about it for for a moment, what we actually saw, and we chose to return home as soon as possible. Daniel managed to find a spot that he could just turn around and drove home. We chose not to tell anyone about this, since no one would even believe us. But after some time, we eventually did tell friends and families about this. They said they believed this. They believed us. But some others didn't believe us, of course, which we were expected much yet. Some thought maybe there was some sort of military craft that we saw that evening. But if there was a, a military craft that we saw, shaped as a cigar, well, it could have been a new type of plane without actual wings. Or what if, but I do not know it would have been if there was a new military craft or like a, a prototype. If it was like that, they would even have shown them around in such near public spaces. Another detail, that wasn't a military craft. Not at least one of what I know of. Because the speed when it took off, the, that, it didn't match any. 
it would easily outpass, outmatched a jet plane. But me and my my husband Daniel believes it was a UFO that we saw that evening of 2006. We hadn't even seen it again since, but that evening made us a very strong believers in a UFO even further. Thank you for listening.